Greetings Earthlings. Uh, we are going to talk today about the new BCS 770 hydro tractors and the 779. The 770 was actually the first version and the 779 is the direct replacement for it. This one uh, that we're going to talk about today is a 770, but the only difference is that on the 779 the handlebars are about six inches longer. All operational things are the same. So, if you've purchased one of these tractors, um, this is what to expect. The tractor will come in a box with these handlebars turned around the other way, actually. Like so. I'll go through all this a little slower later. Anyway, you will get the tractor in a box, all folded down like this, cardboard box, on a pallet. You can uh, hoist it out of there using, you know, all your friends. Or you can slip the corners of two corners of the box, fold the box end down, and roll the tractor out. Just make sure the tractor is in neutral. And then you can commence setup. Uh, sometimes, uh, depending on the particular combination of things you might order from us, the tractor box might be on top of, say, a flail mower box. In that case, just use a couple short pieces of wood to roll it down off of there. A couple 2x6s would work fine. Um, so anyway, uh, the first thing we're going to do is fold the handlebars up uh, to get them to a nice operating position. This is your handlebar height release lever, so I'll push that down, bring the handlebars up to whatever level I want, and let the lever go. The lever simply has a bar welded to it that locks into one of these many positions here, as you can see. So that's easy. The spring loads back up into position, so that's a nice height. I'm also, for the sake of keeping this tractor fairly level for uh, the video purposes, I'm going to stick some blocks of wood under it here just to keep it kind of leveled up. So I will then, I will now turn the handlebars around to where I had them originally. Uh, we'll pop these up out of here. The older ones have this kind of, uh, you pop these up. The newer ones have ones that pop out to the side, but that's irrelevant. They work the same. So I'll pop those out, turn these around. This is your handlebar release lever here. That releases the pin that locks the handlebars in position rotationally. There is an offset to each side, 15 degrees off center for mowing off center or tilling off to one side or whatever. Uh, the handlebars only rotate in one direction. If you try to go the wrong way, you'll run into a big stop. You can't go that way, so you just go the way we allow you to go. Bring them all the way around. Whoops, stop tractor. Okay. In the center position, of course, there's a right and a left offset here, too. Now, when we bring around this PTO lever, this is your PTO engagement lever, You'll notice that from this position, it doesn't just rotate around. You're like, how the heck does this get around to the other side? Well, this red deal here is part of the safety system on this tractor that keeps you from accidentally engaging the PTO when you are in this direction and have a soil working implement on the tractor. The handlebars are now in the soil working position, the rear PTO position. So this is the position the handlebars would be in when a tiller or power hair or rotary plow would be mounted to it. And with the handlebars in this position, they don't want you engaging the PTO when the tractor is in reverse, because you'd till your feet in. So in order to, un to, to kind of unlock this safety, we're going to push this down and then rotate it around and let that red tab pop up through that side of the hole. Now we can get this back to where it belongs. This is the only BCS tractor with that particular type of system on it, the, the thing you have to push down. Uh, all the other tractors, you just rotate it directly around. 770 is a little different because it's got this hydro system built into the gearbox. Uh, the hydro runs the wheels through a hydrostatic pump, so you have infinitely variable wheel speed, and you can reverse the tractor direction without interrupting PTO power. So that's a neat feature of the hydro. It's also more expensive, so you know that's the unneat feature of it. But if the feature of the hydro works well with your applications, then this might be the tractor for you. We'll cover the rest of the controls up here. Uh, this is the on-off switch for the engine. The red is off. The yellow, it, ignore the yellow because it doesn't exist. It's just green or red. Forget, just don't pay attention to this. I mean, that one is obviously stopped, but people say, what happens if I put it in the middle? We're like, well, it'll probably run, but it has a chance of flipping forward. So it's either forward or down in the run position. Now, if this were an electric start tractor, we would also have a key switch on the engine, which you could turn, to, uh, you could use to turn it off. But this hand happens to be a manual start, just with a pull starter. 
So there's that on off switch. This is your P parking brake. That sets, if you pull that back, it locks both the drum brakes, right and left drum brakes of the tractor for you know parking on a steep hillside or putting in a trailer for hauling or whatever. Uh, just a nice way to stop both wheels at once. These levers on the outside are hooked up to the individual right and left drum brakes and they're used for steering. So you squeeze this one, it activates one brake and the machine turns to one side. The, uh, the way these come from the factory, typically, are that with the, ha with the handlebars in the soil working position like they are, the left brake will be the left wheel and the right brake will be the right wheel. However, we find that people much more often use the brakes for mowing applications and when mowing you've got the handlebars turned around into the front PTO mode because your mower is out front. If you have the brakes set up in their factory position, when you turn the handles around, they would be backwards. So we've already switched the cables at the bottom on this one so that this lever is for that wheel because 90% of the times you use the steering brakes, you're going to be mowing. So that's more convenient for the operator. Um, so those are your steering brake controls. This is your clutch. This is your safety lever. Now, the, the hydro tractors are equipped with what BCS calls the power safe clutching system. Uh, it says power safe right there. So PowerSafe is a hydromechanical clutching system that appears on the 740, 749, 750, 739, and uh, 660 model tractors and also the 770 and 779. It is a, as I mentioned, a hydromechanical clutching system that uses hydraulic pressure to push the clutch plates together so that the tractor drives. So both the clutch and the safety lever on all the PowerSafe units are, are basically hooked into the same system. They're both hydraulic valves. Uh, whether you squeeze this lever or let the top lever go, it does the same thing. It ent interrupts hydraulic pressure, dumps the fluid back to the reservoir, and just opens the clutch. So the machine just stops. So if, if I'm tilling along and I let this thing go, the machine stops, but the engine keeps running. It's just like I've stomped down on the clutch. If I'm going along tilling and I squeeze this, it stops. It does the same thing. Now the thing is, you'll notice that when I, when I interface this thing, or when I use this interface, I'm not pushing down the top lever first, because you can't. The top lever, the safety lever, will not unlock until you reach down and squeeze the clutch lever in. Then it unlocks the top lever, you push it down, and now you have clutch control. So if I were to put it in gear and it was running, I would let out the clutch, it would go. If I wanted to change gears, I would you know, well, actually, with the hydro, you're not changing gears, you're using the hydro. So you don't have to interrupt power here unless you want to come to a full stop or, like, engage or disengage an implement or whatever. Then you would squeeze the clutch, say, engage your implement, uh, squeeze or you know, let out the clutch, the implement, and tractor would start going. You could then control your direction over here with the hydro lever. So, and uh, we'll, we'll get to that here once we start the tractor up. But if I were to let this thing go, tractor keeps running, but everything stops in terms of motion. Both the wheels and the PTO just stop uh, because you've, you've, stemp, you've basically engaged the clutch. Okay, on this handlebar, we already talked about this one. That's your right and left lever. Uh, on this handlebar, we've got the hydro. The center is kind of the neutral position. There's kind of a click there where it enters neutral. And then, you know, we've got our forward, more, the further you push it forward, the faster the thing is going to go. Dialing it back brings you back to a slow, slower speed until you hit neutral and then it stops. I can't pull it into reverse right now. Why? Because I engaged the PTO a second ago when I was talking about that. So if I pull this out, it will allow me to come back into reverse. That's part of how that safety system works. It won't let you till up your feet. You might like your feet. Most people do. This is the differential lock. So if we pull this lever back, what it'll do is it'll lock the two wheels on the axle together so they both pull at the same rate of speed all the time. This is good for high traction situations where you need to, say, push a dozer blade or pull a moldboard plow or just get out of a, a hole or up a steep hill or something like that. So if you're operating the tractor with the differential unlocked, which is the way you'll operate it most of the time, uh, power is divided between the two wheels depending on how much traction those wheels are getting. So if you're going, as long as you, both wheels have traction, both wheels have drive to them. But if one wheel starts spinning, because it's falling in a mud hole or something, or you're going up too steep a hill, all power goes to the wheel that spins. 
So then you lock the differential, it locks in the center, and both wheels start turning. It takes often about a, a quarter turn of the one wheel until the other one locks in. So if you don't see it happening instantly, don't worry, it'll happen as soon as the wheel lines up internally. The thing is, once the differential is locked, your steering brakes are useless because now you've locked the differential in the center and there's no way for one wheel to go faster than the other wheel. So if you want easy maneuvering and steering brake operability, you have to have the differential unlocked. This can be locked and unlocked during motion of the tractor, so that's good. You don't have to clutch and stop or anything. So, I think we've covered all that. Now, there is one more lever we haven't covered here, and that's this guy. On the 770, normally on most tractors, this would simply be the gear shift. On the 770, it is the high and low range lever. So, the, the hydrostatic uh, pump has a high range and a low range. When you're in high range, which would be here, uh, the tractor operates in a little faster speed range. It can achieve a higher, you know, miles per hour. You pull it back into the slow range, you have a little better control of dialing your speed in at the low end. So if you're doing a lot of close work and you know, you know, that requires slow speed, you're better off putting it in low range and you'll have a little more control about you know, kind of dialing it into what you want. Uh, the center position on the gear shift is neutral. That's the only position in which you can roll the tractor. Uh, when I mentioned taking the thing out of the box and said to put it in neutral, you want to make sure that selector is in the center. Uh, otherwise, the wheels will not roll. So that pretty much covers all the features. Um, we, there, are, there are also videos on our website specific to uh, engine oil maintenance, that is oil changes. There's an air filter maintenance video. There is a power safe transmission oil change video, which actually occurs on a 749, but the procedure is exactly the same on this machine, except that on the 770 and 779, that, that is the hydro units, you're going to use a 15W40 motor oil in the transmission. Uh, that's a little bit of a departure. Uh, it was actually a shock to me when I heard that. I'm like, what, motor oil in the transmission? But that's what BCS calls for. The other power safe units, 749, 739, and so on, use a uni hydro fluid, which is like a hydro, hydraulic transmission fluid. But this guy, because it's a hydrostatic transmission, as well as a gear drive, they want, the, to protect the hydro pump, they want 15W40 motor oil, like Shell, Rotella, or equivalent. Uh, there's also an oil filter, which we'll look at right here. This oil filter is not for the engine. It is actually for the hydro pump and hydraulic clutch system. Uh, this filter is pretty specific to BCS. You'll have to get that from a BCS dealer. Uh, we've tried matching them up with no luck. Um, and uh, also to be noted is that the filter that's on the hydro units, that is the 770 and 779, is a different filter than on just the power safe units. If it's a power safe unit by itself, like a 739, 749, that filter is a little smaller because it's not having to cycle all the hydrostat fluid through it as well. So uh, I, I should also mention that the BCS 660 is also a hydro unit, so it uses the larger filter. And everything I've said about the 770 and 779 pretty much applies to the 660. The difference is the 660 doesn't have handlebars that reverse. The handlebars in the 660 are permanently mounted over the engine, so it's a front PTO machine only. We don't sell many of those because it's a highly specialized machine, but you know all the same uh, controls pretty much uh, yeah, they coincide. So we've gotten through the controls. Now we're going to go actually and start this thing up. Uh, you're going to want to check your engine oil. Now we fill the engine oil to maximum at Earth Tools. There is no dipstick on this oil cap, so you just take it out, and as long as the oil is visible and it looks like it's ready to run out the hole, you're good. And that's where it is. It's right there. If I tilt this thing up just a little more than level, it runs right out. You do want to check it with the engine level, not lean back like this or lean way forward or anything like that. Unit level should be running out the hole. If there is a dipstick, ignore it as far as I'm concerned. We actually cut the dipsticks off to erase that question. Um, uh, they're not shipped with fuel, so you'll need to put a little fuel in it. Uh, 89 octane regular is fine. I don't like 87. It's a little low octane for hot weather. Um, this one's already got gas in it. I've put it in there. So we're ready to go. Uh, you could also check the, the uh, transmission oil, but if you bought it from Earth Tools, you don't have to. We've already checked that here, but your transmission oil check is right there. That's also your fill. That's a dipstick that just pulls up straight out of the top of the transmission. That's covered on our oil change video for the power safe transmissions.
Uh, so I'm going to start this thing up, put this in the run position, give it a little bit of throttle because we're starting it cold. Make sure the fuel shut off is on. Now when you get this machine from us, the fuel will be in the off position. You want to turn it to the on position as indicated by this little arrow. And this is the choke. We're going to choke it as indicated by this arrow. And usually one pull and a Honda will be going. Unlock the safety, push down the safety, and release my clutch. Now we can hear the hydro pump turning, but nothing's moving. We we'll go ahead and clutch it again, put it in low range. We've got motion, because this actually was moved slightly forward to the neutral position. There's the neutral position. There's moving it forward. We can see we're just creeping along now. Advance it a little bit at a time. We're kind of notches here to move it forward. Neutral, bring it back into reverse. Incrementally change the speed. Back forward. Now I'm going to put it in high range. A little faster. Hard to notice the speed difference when you're in low uh, throttle speed. If I rev up the engine, you notice it more. But it does, it moves faster. breaking that wheel because I mentioned we have turned the cables around. We have a video on our website that is specific to PTO engagement methods on walk-behind tractors. Uh, we talk about a tractor with a standard clutch, a tractor with what's called an active clutch, which appears on the Gorilla machines, and the power safe clutch. The instructions for the power safe clutch are what's going to apply to this machine. Uh, and the, the basic point is, if the PTO, if you're trying to engage the PTO and it doesn't want to go in easily, don't try to force it and don't try to just feather it in by say, you know, letting out the clutch partially and trying to get it to engage. On the power safe units, when in power engages to the PTOs, it engages all at once. And if you try to feather it, it'll just strip the gears off. So if you're having difficulty getting, in, getting the PTO in, Simply let off the lever, release the clutch to let the gears in the, in the transmission turn, clutch it again, and try again. Eventually, it'll go in. When they're new, they're pretty tight, so it may take you half a dozen tries to get it in. And if you watch that video, you'll see that that's what it takes on a new 749. Sometimes you get lucky and it goes on the first shot, but you know the fact is, you can't. if you try to feather it, you're going to strip gears. So just be patient with it. It'll wear in eventually and get easier. And that uh, pretty much concludes this segment. You, we also have um, videos on our website in terms of maintenance for like BCS handlebar adjustments. That all applies to this machine. Cable lubrication that applies to this machine. Um, brake maintenance, which applies to this machine as well. So um, yeah, check out all our other videos and thanks for watching.